What is up, everybody? Welcome back to another edition of the Sheehan Show here on Sherdog.com. My name is Sean Sheehan, and today we are looking ahead to the one on Prime Video 14 Stamp versus Ham card, which goes down in the Singapore Indoor Stadium in Singapore on September the 29th. And it again is, is what you expect from one championship cards as an interim Adam Wade MMA World Championship fight in the main event. There is some Muay Thai, there's some submission grappling. There are there's actually there's a custom rules fight on this as well, which I'm very interested in. Um and there are some of your favorites. You know, Edward Filang is on the card. Uh Stephen O'Man is on the card against John Lineker. What a scrap that is. Um so we'll talk about all of that. I think it's Look, it's a massively interesting time. I, I've spoken about it last week before the, the Bellator card and that uh, preview. And, you know, with PFL doing their thing and Bellator, obviously, in the state of flux, one championship are really the um, the outsiders, I suppose, to the American market that are really making a drive into it. Obviously, with this card, again, going to be on uh, on Amazon Prime and with the new deal on Amazon Prime, which I spoke about the last time, I think it's a really, really interesting time for, for one championship because they have they have a good in there and they have some good fighters. They've been on some good fights and they do... They do different things as well as, uh, you know, the the custom rules fight coming up here, the, the Muay Thai, the, the kickboxing, the uh, the grappling. They have a bit they have a bit of everything. And as we've spoken about many times before on these preview shows for one and the review shows for one as well, it, it just makes them a little bit different. And the reason I say that this time is a little bit different from wh- why I normally say it, because I feel like there's a real fight on now for... You know, well, the UFC or what the UFC are, but between Bellator, between PFL, between even Cage Warriors and KSW, tried a few more. For, for, the, the, I suppose, the viewers, you know? And I, 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 years ago, I think a lot of this would be maybe for relevance, but I feel like all of these promotions are really relevant, whether they're in their areas or to like a large group of people. I think it's a real like it's a really good time for MMA. If you're a fan that wants to see more than the UFC. Look, if you're a fan that just wants to see the UFC, it's always there for you. But if you want to delve a little bit more in, if you want to see, you know, a, a, you see a clip of Stamp and like, okay, oh, I'm going to you know, watch our next fight. You see, oh, I remember John Lineker. I want to watch him. Or, you know, there's, there's people in other promotions the exact same, but obviously we're t- uh, concentrating on one championship today. It's a great time for that. But also, those people, like, say the one championships, the PFLs, they will want to kind of win that battle. And, you know, that makes it good for the fans because, like, to win that battle, you put on the better fights. You 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 know, you draw in the more people. You have the better deals and now you pay the more money. Great for the fans, great for the sport, great for the, the fighters. And, uh, yeah, I think it's sometimes, you know, we can get a bit negative, myself included, you know, and mixed martial arts. But I think it's... It's a damn good time for mixed martial arts. A damn good time for it, and uh, I'm excited to uh, to see what the future holds. It, you know, sometimes we talk about MMA, and it's always like um, the future is almost the long term future. But I think the short term, middle term future of MMA is it's probably as exciting in terms of like what's going to happen over the next while than it's ever been. Apart, you know, maybe apart from when the, you know, the, the maybe the purchase of Strike Force and, and uh, even before that with, with, uh, with Pride. But even with that, there are so many different organizations at the moment doing different things. It's a fascinating time for me. And as someone who's obviously been covering one and PFL and Bellator and all, as well as the UFC over the last few years, I feel like I'm, I'm in a very interesting place at the moment. It's like I, 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 I could, I, I'm watching this flux go on and, and analyzing it as it goes and I'm like we're uh, we're moving here to a rate of knots that maybe we don't even understand to be honest and um, it's brilliant it's brilliant to see look and one being on Prime Video is a massive part of that and they have another card coming up here at the weekend let's um, let's get into it and let's talk about the card because it's it's a damn interesting one let's let's start with uh, the, the main event um, Stamp versus Sohi Ham um for the obviously the uh, interim Adam Weight uh, Championship, and I love the fact that they have made this. Uh, you know, we, we see the rise of women's sport led by MMA. If we're being honest, over the last few years, but the fact that the four 
Um, uh, big fights on this in four different disciplines on the main card are all, you know, four different women's fights. That's absolutely fantastic. You know, we have obviously the, the fight I'm going to talk about here. Um, you know, the Muay Thai fight between uh, Samia Sundel uh, and uh, Helen Rodriguez as well for the, you know, the, the strawweight Muay Thai World Championship. You know, this is an MMA show, so I'm, I'm not going to delve into that as much. We'll talk about that in the, the review show, but I'm sure that's going to be a banger as well. Danielle Kelly is probably one of the biggest names in submission grappling at the moment. She's taking on Jessica Can as well. And then we will speak more in a, in a few minutes about the, uh, the special rules bout between the champ, uh, 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 Zhang Nang, and, uh, and Wonder Girl. Um, it's brilliant. It's absolutely brilliant to see it. It's brilliant that one championship are doing this. It's brilliant that... Uh, you know, it's it's obviously been a set thing that they wanted to do for a while, and now they're doing it. It's it's fantastic to see. And you know, let's let's I suppose concentrate on the main event first. Having said that, I think it's it it's a it's a risky fight, right? That has so much reward because, and, and why why I say it's a risky fight? I think one championship, as they showed, view stamp as like a future star. We've seen, you know, we've seen it with um, with the Lees with Angela Lee. She's been fantastic. We've seen it, you know, with even people say say like a little man, like a fire along, and all all of, you know, the the people you would tune in for to watch a one championship. They've, I think they've done a really good job, but to get that kind of that, you know, the Angela Lee type of star, I I think Stamp could be that next person. I've said that for a good while, right? And the risk I'm talking about here is you're putting in here against um, uh, So Yi Ham, who is a very, very, very good fighter. She hasn't lost since the UFC loss in 2016. She's won, what, nine fights since that, uh, beating some of the best people in one championship, one championship as well, like Hirata, Denise Mwanga last time out, uh, Miyu Yamamoto, Jin Yu Frey, yeah, uh, you know, before she came into the... Um, uh, the the fold I suppose at one championship, just been on an absolutely fantastic run, and we, we you know we'll talk about the fight in a second. We'll talk about how well rounded uh, and and what way the fight might go, but I suppose to put Stamp in there against uh, Soyham is a big uh, risk. But as I said, the reward if she beats her and takes away that, and she's not going to take it away, but to to end that nine fight winning streak would be absolutely massive and it would show the level Stamp has now gotten to. If she has gotten to that level, and you know, we, we won't know until the, the fight actually happens and all that, but it, it'd be absolutely massive. And for Stamp on the other side of it, like she just, she oozes star potential. You know, she's a very good fighter, uh, an exciting fighter. But also, you know, she does the, the, the fun walkout, dancing, and she, you know, she talks afterwards, and she's willing to have the custom fights. Um, She's willing to do it all. She's stepping in there against Angela Lee, you know, what, only 10 or 11 fights into her career or something like that. It's It's been a roller coaster time, a real roller coaster time. You know, I, I, I think the story goes, the kind of Rich Franklin saw her, brought her into the... um. The Warrior series, she won that knockout in 19 seconds, and that was only in 2018. Like, and maybe only 2018. It's five years, um, and I, 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 re, I, you know, you look at her two losses, and obviously they're both by chalk, but she's improved so much in that time. You know, she even got um, uh, an armbar submission of her own in, in the middle of that, and she now has reached the stage where I think she needs to take up that mantle, right? And you almost have to put her into a matchup like this to test her again. She got that test against Angela Lee back in 2022. She lost. She's won two since. Now comes the test again to see if now she's ready. Now if she can take that superstar. Now if she can go to the next level. And it's really exciting to see. It's really exciting to see because I I just wonder if she can. Because uh, Soya Ham is, is so good. Like and The matchup itself. You know, if you watch Stamp, she's all about, I would say, pace with power, but more pace, you know. And, and when I say pace, I mean sp oh, speed more than pace. I think the speed of her shots, the way she kicks to the body, you know, I mentioned that big head kick. Um, she's very good at landing the right hand and covering space quickly. 
so that a right hand that wouldn't normally land she can land it because she's so fast um and then she's her feet are so fast to get away as well it's brilliant because that that's one uh, big improvement i think i've seen in her game in the last while her ability to kind of step away after landing shots so she doesn't one get punched and two get taken down that has been a real 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 big improvement in her game um I think the kind of, you know, having a mixed rules fight, I think she was supposed to have a, well, she was supposed to have a kickboxing match in the middle, or a Muay Thai match in the middle of it as well. Um, I think initially, maybe that's not the best thing in the world to do, because I watched her in one of them, and I, I, or maybe it was an old uh, Muay Thai fight I watched her in. She fights much differently, or she fought much differently in Muay Thai than she does in, in mixed martial arts. A lot, you know, I, I use the word speeder, a lot slower, but... There's a reason she fought slower. You know, it's a, it's a tactical reason, obviously, which I'm sure she could explain rather than me having to do it, but it's, it's just that's the way it was. And when you're kind of moving between, or, or even, you know, you have one, you're supposed to have one before you have a custom rules fight, it is, it, it can take you out of your game a little bit. So hopefully this is now, like, you not stick to MMA, but you know what I mean, do the big MMA fights, and I think at this time in her career, she needs to do that, like if you're Demetrius Johnson or someone, or, or you know, or John Lineker, or whoever it might be, absolutely, um, but I think for Stamp, it's MMA, 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 and she needs to do that, and I think over the last two fights, she has shown those improvements when you do that, the first fight, maybe not her best performance, but last fight, she looked very good, and back to her best, um, and she'll need to be, you know, Soyham is a fast-paced southpaw, good take down the fence, but she's she's one of these fighters who I love watching tactically because she fights very differently, I think, in, you know, past round two than she does in round one and maybe the start of round two. Um, I said she's good take down the fence, but she f- almost fights so open at times early that... It's only good take down the fence up to a point. Now, not that Stamp is going to go in and take her down or anything like that. Although, do you know what? I don't think it would be the biggest mistake if she did threaten at least with a takedown early. Um, having said that, Soyam is very good in transitions. When she gets on top, she's good as well. Lovely elbows. Um, but she's a real... Do you know what she is to me? She's a cyclone fighter. She... Brings the storm early, and she almost, it's not that people, you know, people have to weather the storm, right? She People do have to weather the storm, because if you get caught up in it, you're going to get blown away, <laughs> you know? Um, but once that kind of cyclone ends, she turns into like a more of a square striker, and I've talked about this before in, in previous previews, but, you know, she... In, in in the start of fight, she stretches, she fights longer in terms of where she's thrown her strikes from. She will go at it a lot more. But then, she, as, she, as I said, after that, square striker shortens her jab. And then she allows people almost to fight her at a range or inside a range. And I think, I think that is going to be an issue against Stamp. Because if you look, if you bring the cyclone, if you bring the storm for the, for, for the whole fight... I think it'll be tough enough for Stamp. But is it possible to bring that cardio-wise for the whole fight? It's going to be very tough. Let's be honest, no no matter who it is, it's very, very, very tough to continue at that pace. Um, So I think when it gets to a point where Zoe Ham has kind of slowed down a little bit and is fighting that range, that's where Stamp needs to really take over, she needs to use her jab, she needs to use those leg kicks, she needs to use those high kicks, she needs to use that speed to win the fight, if I'm, you know, if you're stamp here, you kind of have to be thinking, um, you know, and this is obviously going to be five rounds as well, and it, you know, it's fought as, uh, it's judged as a whole, and it's not judged round by round, but you're almost thinking, like, don't take too much in the first round or two, and then bring it on in rounds, you know, three, four, and five. And I think if she does that, she can win. I really do think if she does that, she can win. But I'm really interested to see what the tactical, um, I suppose, grounding is for Soyam. Um, if she's going to adjust her game, maybe she's going to wrestle a little bit more. Maybe, like... Maybe against Stamp, you're 
you, look, you are definitely better off being all the way out or all the way in, but that's not really the way she fights, you know, definitely not initially, but even after, you know, the second part of her game where she adjusts, she does like to fight a range battle. She does like to fight, it, kind of not necessarily in the pocket trading, but like in the pocket as a tactical um, kickboxing match. And that's not where you want to be against them. So I'm interested, like, I'm st- I'm going to lean as my pick towards uh, Soyaham. I'm I'm definitely leaning there, but I would not at all be surprised if 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 they both fight the way they normally fight. I think Stamp can do it, but I do think Soyaham has the ability to change things up. Uh, maybe get a few takedowns, which could be big. Uh, but having, at at the same time as having the fight is scored as a whole, you just never know. And with Stamp's power. And with her quickness, that fight could quickly change. So I'm massively looking forward to that. And I um, I can't wait to see how it goes. I can't wait to see how it goes. And as I mentioned, the um, the four fight, four discipline uh, women's main card is going to be fantastic. Uh, the other fight I want to talk about is um, uh, is Jin Yang against uh, Wonder Girl. And, you know, this, so the rules, let me, I have the rules written down here, I went and got them. So it is three by three minute rounds. Um, punches, all punches are allowed, no knees, no kicks, no elbows, four ounce gloves, and a 10 point must system, right? So not, fight isn't scored as a whole. So basically what, you, what we have here is a boxing match, but we can kind of throw spinning fists, and you can throw back fists, and things like that. Um... And it's it's a striking match, obviously. So I I don't. It says striking match, so I don't believe there are any takedowns either. You know, <laughs> maybe that maybe that should be the rule. But I I think that's it. Um, I, I like I watched Wonder Girl, and she's a very good fighter, very good striker all around. Uh, and look, we've seen Jin Yang, who is, you know, as an MMA fighter, I think she has, especially in the last two fights, gone to a level over and above where she has reached even as it uh, you know even though she had reached championship level before that her i suppose her cadence in the fight um her output has just become so much better and her tactics as well now this is obviously a special rules matchup and it's you know, basically a boxing match um she's a very good boxer and boxes very well early and, you know, there's always a case, and I've mentioned it before, maybe it's a thing where she doesn't want to kind of maybe blow herself out. But this is only three, three minute rounds. It's at a, again, the cadence, I'll use that. It's a different cadence, a different fight. Um, And I wonder how she fights that because Wonder Girl is used to fighting, you know, the Mai Tai, which is, you know, three, three minute rounds or, you know, um, three, uh, five, three minute rounds or whatever it might be. And we've seen, you know, I remember talking to, was it Regan Ersan? After one of the fights, you know, and it's something we don't really see in MMA where people plan for uh, the pace. Usually MMA is it's kind of is just go out and fight type of thing. But in kickboxing, in, in striking, in Muay Thai, they do, you know, it's okay, I'll take the first round off, I'll see how it goes, and then I'll up the pace and up the pace. Uh, and maybe that'll be the one advantage that Wonder Girl has here. Um... So I think no, I might lean just towards her in that one because of that. Um, as I said, I think Daniel Kelly will probably win as well. And uh, I, I, don't, I don't know about the the first one. Maybe I'll, I'll go with uh, I'll go with Sundell to win that one. I'll, 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 I'll go with the Europeans to win it. Um, on the undercard, then I'll talk about the MMA fights. There are a couple of Muay Thai bouts on it as well. Uh, Sinsamud is fighting Dimitri uh, Minishkov at lightweight. Uh, that should be a fun one. And in the Bantamweight division, Asatin Pau is fighting Ramabolek. Um, so yeah, those are the, the Mai Tai bouts. And then there are four other MMA bouts on the card, which are do you know what? They're all they're all pretty much bangers if, if we're being honest. Um first of all, uh let's talk a, a little bit about John Lineker against uh against Stephen Lawman. And my notes here I've just written down John Lineker. <laughs> you know, just John Lineker discuss. But um Look, we all know what John, John Lineker is. That last fight, um, honestly, and and this is my, and this might be a bit harsh, but it's not that I was writing off John Lineker's career here, but 
you know, you're 46 fights into your career, you're you're 33 years of age, but you're about as old a 33 as, as there is out there with the amount of damage you've put on you. You know, you've lost to Fabrizio Andrade only a few months beforehand, you know, and you had that no contest in a fight, you were losing before that as well. You're fighting Jae Won Kim, who hits hard, who was taking you down, who was making the fight really tough on you. And with four seconds left, you unleash on him and you knock him spark out and you, no, not not necessarily rescue your career or anything like that. You know, he'd only lost one fight. I don't want to get overboard about it. But, you know, it was a massive, massive win. And what's mad here is it's, um, it's only, it's not, is it even two months? Not even two months. Uh, August and now it's September. Still the end of September here where he's fighting again. Um, like he took a bit of damage. He didn't take a lot, but turn around that quickly uh, is a little bit surprising, I would say. But we'll see if it'll work out for him or, or if it won't. Obviously, fighting Stephen Laman, who has been around a long time as well, 31 years of age, 18 fights deep in his career, and he's won a lot of fights uh, in a row. Hasn't lost since 2016. You know, he's beaten the likes of Mark Abelardo, uh, my guy Franz Malambo, you know, who is a really good fighter, and we'll see the fighting this weekend as well, beating Bibiano Fernandez, but hasn't fought since... Um, since 2022, you know, only had a couple of fights in 2022, one fight in 2021, and it was 2019 before that. So in the last four years, he's only had three fights, uh, which uh, which may be an issue. But look, for Steve Laman, a similar sort of thing watching his fights to, to, to Lineker, honestly. He throws those hooks. Um, he throws power. He fights out of the southpaw, a little bit different, obviously. He's a kind of rounded guard. You never know where he's going to lead from, almost. You know, I call him a southpaw, but um, he, you know, he can switch stances. Johnny reminds me a, a little bit of, and I've said this before, I think, he reminds me of, like, McGregor, uh, more, the more recent McGregor, where he's kind of staying static in the middle and throwing his power and kind of, like, you know, he's kind of, like, moving the arms and boom, moving the arm, boom type of thing um that's a dangerous dangerous game against against john lineker um you're gonna to have to be defensively very sound like i do think it's going to be the start of fight that low man is winning but lineker will always be in a chance exactly like the last fight my pick is is low man i think low man will win it but it's a da- dangerous fight dangerous dangerous fight and i'm really looking forward to seeing it i think there's going to be some mad exchanges low man will um, try to be the faster, the more better, the well, how we put it, the, the better defensive fighter, if you want to put it that way, in a very offensive move and, and try to win the fight that way. And uh, I think it's going to be, um, I think it's going to be a banger and I'm really looking forward to, uh, to seeing it. Another one as well, which I think is going to be really good is Edward Fialong, a lightweight against uh, Amir Khan. Uh, Fialong, again, power, power, power. Uh, big leg kicks. Um, you know he almost throws the leg kicks to keep uh, uh, to keep active. Um, he doesn't throw it loads, but when it does, it hurts. And then he comes in quick. He throws his spinning elbows. He throws his wheel kick. He's a step in side kick. He likes to keep the distance, uh, stay on the outside, and then do all those things which I just mentioned. But he has a takedown in there as well. He can definitely throw in a takedown. Uh, Amir Khan then on the other side of he's tall. He's snappy with his kicks. He's a long boxer. Very fast with the strikes. After he's kind of slow. So he fights in, in sports. Not not necessarily in sports, but he fights in, um, you know, I'll use that word cadence again. It's a weird cadence, like slow, 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 fast. You know, um, he's very open to a leg kick, um, which is not a great thing against someone like Fialang, who he kicks very, very hard. Um Amir Khan can also train a, a, a takedown. Um, you know, the one big issue I have with him is he, he can be a bit kick heavy, especially head kick heavy, and it puts him in lots of clinches. Now, he is good in the clinch, um, so that's one thing, but if you go kick heavy with Fireline, you could be in big, big trouble. Big, big trouble. So I I find it hard to pick a winner of this one, to be honest. I think both of them are going to, uh, are going to be swinging hard. Both of them are going to be trying to hurt the other lad. I think someone's probably getting knocked out. Like, Fylang, it's a massive fight as well, considering he's lost, what, is it five in a row now at this stage? Like, Amir Khan has lost three of his last five, so it's not as if he's in a massive, uh, uh, you know, uh, 
farm either they, you know they have fought before obviously fire line won back in 2000 and um when was it 2018 so you know I, I think that one went to a decision i i feel like this one won't i think there's going to be some big exchanges here and um yeah i'll i'll, uh, I'll, I'll go with fire line to win that one i know like i know people like giving me giving my picks i'm not a big fan of giving my own picks but i'll give them out anyway um to me maybe the standout fight on the card um is the well maybe not maybe maybe maybe, maybe that's a bit harsh i i think sorelli and elliot is going to be fun as long as it lasts i massively favor sorelli to win this fight i'll be interested to see and check out the betting show this week but i'll be interested to see what the betting lines are like um look elliot has that power that'll keep him in every fight uh he kicks like wonder boy for a heavyweight i've written in my notes power with his hands but he you know sometimes if you kind of just wait on that catch him you can ko him um Mauro, Mauro Sorelli has seen and all. Now, maybe he hasn't seen a Karateka at heavyweight, but he has been in there with some of the best. You know, Carl Moore. Um, who else has been in there? Brandon Vera. Many, many, you know, very, very good fighters in the, in the heavyweight division. You know, Arjun Singh Buller. Um, you know, who else? Amir Ali Akbari. You know, who he lost, uh, I suppose, last time out in, in maybe a, a shock to to some people um and this is kind of a, a bounce back fight but i think he will bounce back here um i i just think the fact that he can circle well jab well and get inside and you know take his time getting inside i think that's kind of exactly what you need to do against paul elliott uh he rushed against who was it against brandon vera and he ended up uh, he ended up getting knocked out in uh, in that fight, and that's something I don't think he will make the same mistake about doing again. Um, the Ali Akbari fight was a bit different, you know, and uh, it's it's funny. Like you're, what is he? Forty years of age now. It's maybe there's too many losses coming, and maybe it's his time. But I don't know. I I like Pali. I love his style. I really like his style, but I don't know if it's the style that's going to beat Sorelli. So we'll we'll see on that one. Um, and in the final MMA fight, or uh, in the final and 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 first MMA fight tonight, Blake Cooper against Maris Abevi. Uh, Cooper's only two fights into his career. I watched. Um, there was one of them. Van Cage Warriors. I watched that. He looks very strong, good on the ground. He, like when he gets to, when he got to the ground first in that fight. It was like it was like I'm not sure is this guy good on the ground? I'm not sure. He's kind of just waiting in a position, but he was kind of I think he was just kind of putting his weight on a guy, and he went once he moved once he started um, um, adjusting position once he got the choke and he's like oh okay, okay hold on this guy's actually really good on the ground he, you know strong he looks really strong looks like he can hit that kind of straight left right down through the middle as well and as a two and a half fighter fighting six and one uh, a bevy you know he's going to have to because that. I believe he's a good fighter brilliant uh defensively with his movement i would say with a very good head um and footwork um but he's a, a very kind of energy draining fighter um and his opponent's almost the opposite you know uh i bet he's kind of wide open when tired he's a wild striker with flying knees and turning kicks really great combos he's fast he has a takedown in him he's uh a win by i think he's a win by calf slicer as well trying there so honestly i don't know who's going to win i lean a bevy best on um based on he's had more fights i suppose he's more tested but i'm not sure at all who's going to uh going to win this or or if um you know, uh, Cooper can raise to that level, but we'll, you know, we'll see. That's why they fight, and uh, that's why you watch the fight. So, um, I believe it. There, it's it's going to be a very fun card, to be honest. There are a lot of bangers on this, and um, a lot of important fights as well. So, that's the reason why we tune in and watch MMA, isn't it? All right, I will leave it there. My name is Sean Sheen for SureDog.com, and I'll see you all next time.